So today, we're gonna do the long-awaited beer rings. Now, making jewelry out of soda bottle caps or beer bottle caps or chapas is nothing new. The first time I ever saw it done was in the Carnegie Museum of, I think, Natural History or Art or whatever it is down there. It's huge. If you ever get to go to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, go there. It's really cool. In the gift shop, 30 years ago, I saw it, and I was intrigued. I know there have been different designers that had whole lines of jewelry based on funky old soda caps, beer caps, you name it, whatever. But I have a way that I do it my way that I think is kind of nice. It's a little bit more finished instead of just your beer cap, you know, and you stick a veil on the back of it and you hang it. You know, they, they're wonky, they hang stupid. You know, we want it to hang nice. We want this to look more artsy, more finished, more you. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And of course, as I always say, I want you to then take it to the next level. Don't necessarily do it just the way I did it because it is kind of my deal. My chapas are signed Bisu. If you ever see them somewhere out there, who knows, you might. Wouldn't be the first time it happened. You could sign yours with your name. There's a video on that, on how to do it with a Dremel. But just to show you a little bit close up, what I do with mine, that's so different, is you can see that it's drilled and rivet, tube riveted to finish the hole. It's also mounted into a turtle back mount, a 32 millimeter turtle back mount. This one's brass ox. We have them at bisuboutiques.com. They're not expensive. We also have the rivets. But then what I do, is I use big jump rings and stuff and I hang doofus off of it to make it just a little bit more than all that. Make it boutique and cool and you because you're going to use your doofus or maybe some of mine but you're going to make it your own. So come on over here like I always say I'm going to show you how I mount and, and, and I poke it to make it and drill and all that stuff blah 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 and show you how I make Earrings. Okay, so for this project, of course, I need my caps. This time I had these cute uh, reproduction fruit punch caps that I thought maybe I'd use just to be different. Here were some that I had prepped. These are for my hairdresser, Cindy Long. So, Cindy, if you're watching, and I know you are because you're always watching, um, these are going to be your earrings, darling, once I finish them. As you can see again, they have the turtle back mount, which is this. And they have the two holes, which I drilled on my drill press, and I'm not, I will not be showing you that in this video, but there are many ways to drill, and we'll suggest them all. Um, and then just the prongs bent down, so they just basically need ear wires and some stuff hanging from the bottom. And then I tube rivet the holes. I like to tube rivet my holes because it gives them a very nice finished appearance. Um, something else that I did, as you can see these are flared out and that's what I'm going to do today. But sometimes I just bang them straight head on and make it go down underneath. And there's kind of a, you're going to have to get some junk caps and experiment with that because it's kind of, it's wonky. It's hard to get them just right. They kind of have that run over by a truck look. I happen to like that because I love a found item look. I like it to look like I went out and found it out here in the driveway somewhere because I'm behind a grocery store. I could find them here. Um, I didn't though. Anyway, just saying, you can make them go flat like this. These are not cut. They're hammered under. I'm not going to show that in this video. Maybe another one. But... Um, Javi, if you want to pan in on this, Javi's shooting the video today, everybody. Let's applaud for Javi. Yay, Javi. Um, Cindy got me two sacks like this full because she works, oh, I can't remember where it is, Eagles at night sometimes, but she's my hairdresser. So if you like the color of my hair, you can go to Cindy Long at Alta in Bournemouth, Ohio and get an appointment. If not, what can I say? She's the best hairdresser in Bourbon. Anyways, enough of that. Yeah, let's get moving. Yay, Cindy. Okay, so 
To start, I'm going to take my little caps, my little chapas, and this is a chain nose pliers. This is a wolf tools, chain nose pliers. But any chain nose pliers will do. And I am simply going to pull this out. I really should have just left one and did the other one off camera to save time, but we'll talk. Um, here's what we'll talk about while I'm doing this. We're going to talk about is this gummy inside thing. The old ones, one of the ways you can tell that you got an old one is it has cork in here. Okay? This is definitely a reproduction cap because it's got the plastic. What do you do? Well, to make tapas or bearings the way I do, you don't have to worry about it. Leave it there. The only time you got to worry about that as if it would be exposed. As you can see, I just flared that out. But it's not going to show. It's going to be behind the mount. Don't worry about it. Leave it go. If you want it out, take your heat tool. This is the one we use. It's at the site. We just restocked them. There is no better heat tool than this one. Worth every dime. Get one. You can't get anything hotter than a torch. Anyways. Heat it up really good and it'll peel off. Because you know, it's just thin plastic. Thin plastic when it gets hot will kind of shrivel up and die. So if you want it to shrivel up and die, use the heat tool from bisuboutiques.com. Or whatever. I have done it with a torch too, but it could make your paint peel and all that, so like don't go there. Okay. I've got them pretty well flared out. Alright, now. I have this nice hammer that has a rubber end on it. Here's where it gets tricky. I may hit my hand. I hope I don't. But, you know, it happens. I'm going to start tapping this. Because I want to get it down a little bit. It's too high. A good technique would be to like curl your fingers under, but I can't keep hold of the dang thing like that. So, I'm going to have to risk it. If you know a better way, I'm glad. You can share it with me kindly. I would love to know. This is how I do it. Okay? See, I almost got myself. Alright, I'm going to do it to the other one. So, see if she can get through it this time. Ah, something fell. That wouldn't be a stretch, would it? You see how much stuff is on the surface? See, there goes some chain. Soon we'll have an avalanche. I am keeping my fingers back. We do want to be safe. I'm just saying, this is how I do it. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. Alright, that's good enough. Now, you got to do the back too because that's just not quite right. I'm going to go ahead and use my chasing hammer now because it don't really matter on the back. But you want to get that edge a little flatter and the reason is, is because you're going to want to drill through it. I may have to pull it out. I may have a little flip. No, it's, it's going out. It's you know, there's some experimentation here so like Cindy was so generous with me and giving me all these beer caps. Um, they're not microbreweries or anything. There's like Bud Light and Rolling Rock and stuff in there. Um, cool stuff. Um, if you order and you want to like try this, say give me some free beer caps and we'll uh, float you a few pair. And we can all say a big thank you to Cindy for giving us our practice caps. So you can see I'm taking the peen end of this ball peen chasing hammer and I'm kind of pushing that back out. So I'm getting this flattened. See, I want to drill through here eventually. Not right this minute. But I want to get this down. I'm taking it down. I'm taking you beer caps down. Okay, I got to do this one now too, so hopefully I can do it a little quicker. Since I know you're not all into 
25 minute long videos. You want to learn fast and get out of here and go to Mexico. Okay, there goes the cheap tuba glue. Yeah, I'm getting this flattened out a little bit. I'm going a little bit harder at it. And I keep my fingers out of the way. Okay, very good. It's getting there. Now I'm going to take my peen end, the round end. This is the ball peen. Ball peen chasing hammer. No, we don't have them in stock. My guy says he'll have them for me first of December. If you want to wait that long. Chances are, I bet you have one already. If not, I'd love for you to get one from me since I taught you how to do this for free. But it's okay. I don't have them today. Today is... What is it, Rob? It's November 7th? November 8th. Yeah, I leave these videos up for years and years. Today's November 8th, 2013, so we will have them going forward. All right. They are flattened quite nicely. Okay, now comes the setting part. Okay. So now I'm going to take my turtle back, and I'm going to make sure these, are, these prongs are pulled out pretty nice. And I like to put them this way. Don't put, them, don't put it like this. Because if you put it like this, then you just covered your drilling area. Don't do that. It goes like this. Okay, so now I do them diagonally to get them set properly. And I'm already having problems with one because it's over a little bit farther. So just take my chain nose and push it down. Yeah, I was drinking coffee before I started this. Not beer. Although that sounds like a thought. Probably get in trouble for doing that on camera. I'm not much of a beer drinker though, to be honest with you. Not into it too much. So I didn't drink all this beer. Okay, so you see, that's all nicely set. See, it's all nicely set. Doesn't that make a nice finish? And see, you can, you can sign right in there. See which one of these has a signature? Is it this one? I think this one. No, of course it's not. Ah, I didn't sign these. Rats. Oh well. Anyway, you can see where there's a nice signing pad in there for you to use. Okay, let me get the other one in the mount and show you again. Once again, we're going to go diagonally. Pull these out a little bit. They are sharp. Don't cut yourself. <clears throat> Once they're down, they're not going to snag on anything if you get them set properly. Okay, go diagonally first because that gets it centered better, I have found. Okay. I hope I'm not moving too fast because this camera still wants to go out of focus whenever I move too quickly. And I apologize for that. But the video is free. And I am showing you something that I was going to keep for myself, but I decided not to. See how much I love you? Okay, so they're set. They're set fairly, fairly nicely. Okay, I'm not happy if you can zero in on them. They're all set. So now what we need is we need holes. We need a hole here and here, and at least one here and here. Now I'm going to do these with just one hole. But when I do these for the shop, a lot of times I do them with several holes. Like you can even see on this necklace. Some of them have a couple holes. Sometimes I do three, one, two, three. Okay, so to get my hole set, I use a center punch. Now, guys, you don't have to have a center punch. If you've got a nice big fat nail, you're good to go. Anything that'll ding, an awl, although you'll probably dull your awl. Okay, so now you kind of look for a place in the middle, up there, and I just eyeball it. If you need to, then measure it. Don't get too close to the edge. I'm going to ding it. And of course, this is going to want to skid, so it may take a couple of attempts. I'm just digging it. I'm not making a hole. I'm just making a kind of a pilot for me to drill this out so I can see where it's going to go. it down with the edge of my hand. You know, my friend Francesca Watson is opening a studio gallery out in San Antonio. I think sometime I've got to ride my pony on out there because 
she's going to teach me in her loving, kind way all the stuff I do wrong with my metal stuff. I'm not a metal teacher. I love metal, but um, she knows all the big boys' toys. That's Francesca Watson Designs. You might want to look it up sometime. She is a wonderful person. And she's going to be a brilliant teacher. Okay, guys, so that's as far as we go. And the next thing we want to do is we can use a screw hole punch like this. Or a hand punch if you happen to have one. I don't know if I have one out here to show you. No, because I don't usually ever use one. Um, but we do carry them on the site. They're coming back in real soon. So you can use that. You could use your Dremel drill. Now, this one's got a sanding burr on it right now, but this I drill with this. You've seen me probably in some of my older videos use this drill. Or... You can use what I use, which is a drill press. So I'll be back after they're drilled and show you how to set the tube rivet. Okay, so now I have holes. And again, you could have done that with one of these apparatuses, with your drum or with a drill press, however you get, or get somebody to do it for you, however you're most comfortable. You can do it anyway. But like I like to like to do afterwards is take and run an awl through just to make sure that I've got all the debris out of my hole and everything's good okay now like I told you I like to finish my holes I've showed th this in videos before so I have my rivet and I have it face side down with the rolled side out and I'm going to place it over here okay now I do this freehand once again, holding my fingers back as much as I can. You can use a setter if you want. You might be better off with a setter. I just like it this way. I do it, somebody told me this is called blowing out a rivet. I don't know. But I just kind of gently and kind of coax it. You see my motion? It's kind of a little bit of a forward coaxing motion. You can even turn it if you want. I think it's done pretty good. Yeah, I want a little bit more so now I'm gonna go ahead and blow it out so it's completely squished. And then I might give it a little tap this side too. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do all my holes. I have four because I have two chapas here that I drilled two holes into. ball peen end. That's what I use. Okay, now I have one down. And eh, I think I need that. Maybe it needs a little bit more. Okay. And now I go through them again just to make sure they're clear. In case they got too blown out and collapsed on themselves too much. So that's done. See, it's so nicely finished that way. Okay, this I need to pound a little bit because got a little bit of debris sticking up. I could file it, but I don't have to, you see, because I'm setting it. So that kind of, also setting your holes eliminates maybe some filing you might have to do. So once again, I'm putting the rivet with the rolled edge down. It's a tube rivet. It's a 332 tube rivet, and I'm using silver colored ones because I like the contrast. I like mixed metals. And once again, I'm going to coax it. Bouncing my hammer on there and kind of just pushing it. And then I'll go to the other side, give it a couple hammer hits. Good, 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 good. One left to do, and then we can finish the earring. I, it, it, when I'm making these myself here in the shop with no interruptions, not showing anyone what I'm doing. I can do it in 15 to 20 minutes, make a pair of these. So. They are not labor intensive. And you know, these don't just have to be earrings, they could be charms. You know? You could maybe make a bracelet, I don't know. But what you do have to do is, on that edge, 
sometimes this little edge here now this is this is pretty smooth it's not bad but in case you get an edge once you've flared it out and it's kind of a little bit sharpish zero 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 triple zero no quadruple zero steel wool from the hardware store will smooth edges very nicely and you can see filing time it's amazing how many times you can just use this and it's good yeah it's very nice okay so let's get the only thing is it makes all this crap excuse me if you don't like that word okay so another thing too want to check and make sure with your chain nose that uh, these are all down real good because you don't want them up at all to catch in hair or clothing that's one thing about jewelry you know a fine finish <sighs> brings your customers back and makes your jewelry endure because you know you want people to enjoy it. you don't want to say oh it stained my clothes or I was you know it snagged me or it cut me how, much, how terrible would that be so okay I'm gonna remove my bench block and show you how I finish this off it's so simple I use these nice big jumps. I think these are I think they're 10 millimeter. I don't have my calipers down here. But you know, whatever works for you. Oh, I shouldn't have drank all that coffee today. My hands are shaking. Now I'm putting a little embellishment on there. You can put little tiny beads. These, I don't know Javi, if you can get in on that or not. These are on our website. They're like little sprocket gear star beads. They're cast brass. We have not plated brass socks. In fact, we just got a big shipment of them today and Javi was really glad to stop sorting them so she could film this because they're kind of pesky to be counting and sorting. You liked getting away from that job, didn't you, Javi? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She'd rather be doing this. She's my little geeky girl. She loves all the computer stuff. So with Rob leaving for his machine shop job soon, I um, will be counting. I don't think Hobby will let us down at all. She's pretty special. Okay, so I got one in. Now I have to go this way. And you could even hang more stuff on that if you want. Now why did I have to go that way? Well, because I'm going to put this on here and it's got to be able to fit. It goes this way, so open that up. put it on and close it. Always close as tightly as you can. Nice and flush. See? Okay, let's do the other one before we do the bottoms. Take your jump ring. I'm using the jumpy tool. See, I use the big slot. Leave my hand stationary and twist. That's how they work, guys. Sometime we're going to step out a video just for that. Now, here's the proof in the pudding. Did I get this the right side? Yep. Just like butter. Okay, so now I'm going to take my little sprocket and put that on there. Use my jumpy tool again. And close. Nice and flush. Now I'm going to take another jump open, open, close. I could have left that open and just slid this on instead of opening the, the, the um, end of the earring too. Could have done that. But like I said, I messed up and drank too much coffee today, so my hands are a little shaky. My hands have always tend to be a little shaky. My sister-in-law always says she finds it amazing that I can make jewelry because my hands are shaky. I'm just naturally that way. Hey, it just shows you manage. If it's something you want to do and you love it, you manage. It doesn't matter. So if you have an illness, even you had any Parkinson's or something, maybe. You could even still do this. Okay, now I'm going to put the bottom on, which I have these already made up. 
I have a little thing here. And I'm thinking maybe it'd be fun to put this Paris thing on here. I don't know. What do you think? Does it hide it? Let's put one on and see. Let's decide together if we're going to do this. And maybe I'll put the little sprocket thing too. Because you know me, I love excess. Excess is my middle name. If you guys weren't watching me, I'd get it on. Ah, oh, I hear Shelly coming in the back door. Did you hear the squeak? It's not Lauren trying to crawl out the back door and escape. She's over here loading that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. What do you think, guys? I kind of like it. It's like you went to Paris and you had crescent imitation fruit punch. Except it wouldn't say that in Paris. It'd say it in French. And of course, I have no idea how you say that in French. I don't have any clue how you say that in French. Hmm. I'm not even sure how to say it in Spanish. Frutas, imitación, bebida de frutas, imitación. What do you think, Javi? Eh, yeah, I think so. Sabor artificial y sabor y color artificiales or something like that. Mm -hmm. Would that be good? Yes. Javi's from Chile, so she knows you say. French, no, I don't know. Okay. But we're going to put Paris on anyway, just because we like things funky. Okay, we got us a pair of bearings. In this case, um, fruit punchings. <laughs> Aren't they cute? Wouldn't you love to wear those? So if you want to love to wear them, then you got to make some, right? We have the turtle backs on the site. We have all the little doofus that hangs. We have the earrings. We have the sprocket beads. Um, you can come up with your own, you know, centers, your own uh, caps if you want me to float you a few. I've got gobs of them thanks to Cindy. Yay, Cindy. Um, you can also make pendants out of them. I did a pendant. This is an old mummy um, soda cap. This one had cork in it. Yep, so it's a real one. So anyway, I hope um, this was clear and that you understand. And, and um, be careful with the power tools, guys. Be careful with the hammers. Have fun. Go make some money. Knock yourself out, not your fingers. And um, let me know how it goes. And come join us at the Bisa Boutique's creative group at Facebook and show me what you did. Because we want you. We have, I think, almost 1,500 members, but we still have room for you, so come. And come visit us at bisuboutiques.com. Thanks.